Behind these people is the trash can where I lost my wallet last year. And luckily, no one found it in the middle of the dark right there. Yep, that's where I lost it. And found it again. So this is all going away in a few days. Coming where you can play with all your Disney friends. Welcome to the Digital City, where playing is a way of life. Here we go! Oh, it looks like Baymax. And Pluto. Oh, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but this is the front of the Guardians of the Galaxy spot, and that's the ship that's now being built outside, which I would love to go take a check at. A place to play and create. And then it's done. On behalf of all Zendarians, may I say that we are extremely pleased and excited to be coming from our world to your Disney World. At our Zendar presentation, which we understand will be the first other world showcase in the world of Zendar. This is a critical moment. Yeah, when Rocket unplugs you! So pretty. Crowds are starting to pick up because the sun is finally out. It's chilly. People are putting on layers. But still a whole lot better. It is 4.45 and it is starting to get crowded. So it's a Saturday night at Epcot. Yeah. You know, people are going to come here and start to eat and drink and do their thing. Um, but I still have my... I'm going to meet... Flame at 7.45 for drinks before we have dinner at the Abracadabar and hopefully I can show her the Abracadabar Abracadabar that was funny that was from uh, two Christmases ago uh, the first night of my trip Christmas Eve in 2019 and if I can find it I'm, I the video for it I'll put that link in here so in the sun, it is actually hot. In the shade, it is cool. It is 63 degrees out. Thank you, Florida. So it's not even like the weather changes. It's like where you're standing changes the weather. Because, yeah. Um, I'm gonna chill. I still have three foods I'm supposed to eat for the festival. <sighs> I am so full. I'm so full. And I might just go taste them. Because... I'll try. If I don't, mea culpa, the food won. But that gives you an idea as a gluten-free eater that you could eat all day and get stuffed and still not eat everything that you are able to eat. You know, some things are modified. It's always worth asking if they can change it up. Uh, if they can't, you know, then what do you do? But, you know, you give it the option, you give it the try, and, and you might find a surprise with something you really like. <laughs> if you haven't done so already, please remember to like this video and by hitting the thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down at the bottom. That way you'll know when more content I have is coming out. Uh, I go do both gluten-free dining reviews and travel vlogs about Disney and Universal. Uh, sometimes I will talk about the Renaissance Festival and all the fun stuff involved with that, so you may get some of that content coming up in the next few months, depending on well, within the year, but yeah, you might get some of that. Um, you know, this is this is this is fun. This is what I love doing for you guys. So I hope you're enjoying it. I really do. Hey, hey, Pua. But hey, hey, Alan Tudyk, you went to. I do this every time. Put it in the comments. Did Alan Tudyk go to Yale or Juilliard? Put it in the comments. I need to remember. Thank you. This is the new stuff they out for this year. Of all the five senses, the scent is most strongly connected to memory. Oh, they're so pretty. A hint of lime, a hint of citrus, any one fragrance has the power to evoke a vivid recollection of the collections with staggering clarity. And I see hydrangea and marigolds and their berry daisies. Follow your nose through this scented garden and cherish lasting memories with the help of fresh, unforgettable fragrances and their many botanical varieties. So we're going to go to... Sensi. Now, earlier today, I had a lavender drink. So we're going to start with lavender. Can you smell it? 
Oh, oh, see, and I can smell it all in here. That's amazing. The word lavender comes from the Latin lavare, which is to wash. So it's no wonder why this herbaceous fragrance is infused with memories of warm baths, spas, and relaxations. Now, this is interesting. Oh, so this thing itself also puts out the smell of this, which you don't smell it from the plant. It's kind of odd that you get it from that thing versus the actual. Now, oh, of course, see the lilac scent in bloom. I love lilacs. A full-bodied and delicate floral fragrances are some of the first senses, scents of spring. With their soft mid-notes, lilacs and violets can bring back memories of a gentle strolls through lush meadows and bountiful gardens in bloom. Lilacs and violets. And you stick your nose in here, and you smell violets and lilacs. And these are lilacs. These particular lilacs do not have much scent, but these are lilacs right here. They're beautiful. With spice. The rich scent of cinnamon can evoke sweet culinary memories. It's almost impossible to think of baking or sipping warm apple cider without its spicy, comforting fragrance. What treats come to mind when you encounter this unforgettable aroma? Put it in the comments. And we smell. Waft, waft. There's a lot of cinnamon there, not a whole lot of vanilla. Tastes smelled a little bit fake compared to the others. That's okay. We're gonna go see what else is here. Woods. Just the scent of pine can make you feel like you're deep in an evergreen forest. Its invigorating fragrance can instantly transport you to brisk hikes among towering trees and starry campfires in the crisp night of air. Enjoy the full-bodied scent of black forest pine and then allow yourself to wander off into the wilderness of memory. It's kind of piney. I can accept that. That's piney. We got two more to do. The sparkling scent of citrus. The sparkling scent of citrus can conjure wholesome images of childhood. Lemonade stands, soccer practice snacks, and fresh squeezed juice. Its classic top notes may recall memories of flavorful cooking, too. What zesty memories does the smell of citrus stir up for you? Put it in the comments and let's smell. Ah! I mean... Sort of? I don't get citrus a whole lot from that. Oh well, still good stuff. We got one more. Fruity, pineapple. Okay, I can smell the pineapple coming out of this already. It's like Dole Whips. Pineapple symbolize warm hospitality and for many, so does the fruity fragrance. The ripe and juicy mid notes can instantly transport the imagination to balmy gateways where tropical refreshments are plenty and the sun never seems to fade. Does this fruity fragrance remind you of a certain soft serve treat? Well, I already answered that. And it is the scentsy scent of pineapple pucker. Hmm. So this is both an experience and an advertisement. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go see if the butterfly garden is open. Let's try this again. Do we have power? I think we have power. Yes. I hope I was recording all of that, guys. That would be really depressing if I wasn't. I just went through like two-thirds of the garden showing you stuff in the garden. It didn't work. Hi, look, here's the previous part of the garden. I just walk you through. There's host plants, host and nectar plants, and nectar plants. But they're all over the place and they're hidden in here. They're helping the Atala. Oh nice, they're bringing them back from extinction, that's awesome. The solitaires are the ones I see the most around. I love just the peaceful experience and the earthy kind of smell. And of course, everything is covered here to protect them because you don't want them to like burn in their chrysalis. And I do see some that are pupa that are still green. Like they're all different sages there. So you see kind of the ones that look a hair more wormy and then they go into that green phase and then they come on out when they're done. Oh, and there's one almost totally out. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can get you in there. Can you see that? And there's one sitting on top saying hi to it. That's kind of cool. Strawflower coral honeysuckle. I think that's beautiful, actually. Lonicera sempervirens. Sempervirens. Now if you're sneezing and I get nervous, I need it. Pretty one right there, do you see it? 
I'm going to see if I can cut in on the footage so you can see a little better. You see the gun down here? Show off. Wasn't that awesome? Oh, I love that experience. It's just peaceful. So, I'm going to sit down for a little bit and just kind of chill. We're right by the land. I might go to living with the land. I'm not sure yet. Let's see how we feel. So I was wandering around, making my way, deciding what I was going to do next. And between everywhere that's blocked off, I realized that I should walk around toward the front to go to the stuff I wanted to see in the back and realized there's no line for Spaceship Earth. So you know what? We're going to ride it. What fun. Remember, thank the Phoenicians. They haven't worked for the last three or four times I've been there, so it works, and I don't look up. Oh well, at least I recognize my hat. That is the moon, and that is the Guardians of the Galaxy ride that is still being built, but it's much closer to being done. It's a very large and impressive building, and that's only the pre-show. Oh, but there's something new. Any of you follow over the standard vlog type stuff, or... Disney news channels, you've already seen this, away from but it's awesome. It was installed about a week ago, two weeks ago, and now they're putting in the battle distress on it. But I'm assuming you see the large star shape up there. It's a Novacore ship from Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh my god, look at that, guys. Okay, I'm going to say it's about... Three to four stories tall. Oh, and I see where they've put the battle distress on it. Awesome. Like if you look at the very, very top, you see where it looks like it's been going through. It's very subtle. There's like yellow on the gray and, gray and brown on the yellow and that's gorgeous. And they were concerned it was gonna look like it was stuck weird, but it looks like it's just in a docking station. Yeah, that's awesome. So awesome. Okay, so I'm trying to see what's running, what's not. If we're gonna do something, the wind is picked up, which means going outside for test track might be cold. Let me clarify, will be cold. Um, but let's see, let's see. If not, I still technically have three foods I'm supposed to get. I don't think I can get the three foods and still have dinner tonight. And I don't wanna spoil that dinner because I've been looking forward to that. So what I think I may do is just get the one dessert, which was the most unusual of the items here. It's going to be a modified item rather than the full-on item. She is pretty. She is very, very pretty. And that's all blues, whites, and purples right now, which are sort of my favorite color tones. Out of all of the beacons of magic that they've done for the holiday, for this, this 50th, this is my favorite. It's so beautiful. Hmm. Well, gang, 
It is time for us to get ready to head out of the park. We have dinner at 8.25 over at the boardwalk, and we are going to meet uh, Flame over at the boardwalk at the Abracadab Bar at 7.45. So I've got about 45 minutes to make my way out, maybe see if there's another photo op along the way, and get myself ready to go enjoy a lovely dinner. I know, I've had so much food to eat. The food one, you know, I knew it was going to. I, well, I hoped it wasn't going to, and I, I'm sorry I couldn't share other stuff. But, you know, I think you guys will be able to explore and try things out yourself and see what you like. I'm excited to share all of it with you, and uh, let's go make some magic. These are all the floating gardens. So some of these have plant life and flowers. Some of them are just green and will continue to bloom throughout the year. And then in the distance, I don't know if you can see it. And again, I can't get close because I don't like what the camera does. But if you look in the uh, flowers, you will see the shape of a Mickey. And they have a 50 over there. And more Mickey heads in all the flowers. We're heading out of the park. We're going to go chill somewhere warm. Yeah, just going to chill somewhere warm. Uh, she is headed from Universal Property over to the boardwalk, and I am going to do the same thing. I'm going to walk on my way out. I'm probably going to get there around the same time. Just for your reference... Park closes at 9 and all the food places seem to be open till then. 80 minutes for Ratatouille's Adventure, 65 for Frozen Ever After. Mission Space 15 and 30, depending on which version you do. Restaurants. Uh, Soren 45, Living with the Land at 10, Nemo 10, Journey and Imagination 10. Whoops. A night in Epcot on a very cold day. Now, I do see a lot of people that look like they're heading out. But this would be the time the locals come to eat and enjoy, to drink, to play, all that fun stuff. So you've all seen the Peter Pan and, and uh, Hook one, which I think I filmed last year. But the crocodile is new. Isn't he fun? He's so cute. His tail even comes out. Well, guys, that's it for Epcot for this trip. I hope this has been amazing for you. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the little bits and pieces. I didn't do a lot of rides. I could have. I could have rushed. It's not worth it. There was a lot of fun things to do just in the little surprises. Can't wait. Now we're heading over to the boardwalk for dinner. Drinks and then dinner. There's a specialty drink for St. Patrick's Day. St. Paddy's Day, as my friend would always say. And uh, I hope you guys are all ready to join us. Come on along. Come on along. It's Michelle's time. No, we're going to cut that. Because <laughs> that was ridiculous. But come on along. We'll see you there. I want you to appreciate the beauty of this particular view of France. America, Morocco, France. It's really nice with the Ratatouille sign. They can be very romantic here. Disney, not just for kids. Hey, sweetie. He's yelling at people to stay away from him, I think, but he's beautiful. He looks like an ibis, but he's dark brown, not gray. The gray ibises I knew are the babies. Okay, Rachel. What is he? Put it in the comments. I know you know. It was a lovely meal. We went to visit the Abra Collater, and unfortunately, the Abra Collater does not have a name tag. They have a 50th made for it, but... They don't have the adhesive, so sadness. No name tag. It's cold. Oh, are the stairs done? Oh, <gasps> they finished the stairs. So the last time I stayed here, this whole area was completely blocked off because they were doing all kinds of upgradey stuff. So you had to go into the boardwalk and up and over to get into that center section. I was going to do that anyway because it's cold. Yeah, no, and I'm fine with that. But this, you couldn't get to the center building at all. This was all blocked off. All been refinished. It looks, excuse me, it looks lovely. Doesn't it look pretty, everyone? Ooh. For those of you who are uh, younger than us, which is probably a lot of you, you turn these and it shows you a movie. It's a long one. Okay. okay, and it was a big deal back then. <laughs> They are about to redo these lobbies. The ESPN that didn't reopen past pandemic is totally gone. They're going to be putting a new shop in there. Uh, there's a female, it's a bakery. I don't think we're ever going to be able to eat there, sadly. Oh. 
I was gonna say, let's sit here and order so that we're order. not out in that. Order. Yeah, find a warm spot. Um, but we are ordering our lift and, oh, the little balcony looks beautiful now, but it's gonna be cold out there, so I'm not going out. It is, what did we say, 52 degrees out now, no sun and a wind. Uh, but everything is okay for the time being. Um, but yeah, so they're gonna change all of this lobby. They're gonna change the ASPN. They're closing, they're changing the Boardwalk Bakery because the other place is gonna be a bakery. And the Boardwalk Bakery will be more, a more quick service -y type spot. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of changes coming here other than this pretty refresh. So it's, it's worth keeping your eye out and seeing what they're doing soon. All right, so we're gonna get our lift. We're gonna get back to the room. You may or may, we may or may not get any more footage of this, but this is the end of our time in Disney for this trip. So we had an awesome time taking you along with us, or at least all day with me and then with the evening with her. Um, and I hope, I hope you uh, come back and join us again. I think my next Disney is going to be Disneyland. Yeah, Disneyland. So we are back in Universal Land. So this is what the lobby looks like when there are people in it and it's not 3 a.m. Ta-da! Uh, so there's your quick service. Strongwater Tavern is there, and our room is that way. This is the bar here. They are open. Bar only, no food. So there's a lovely little deck. Many, many drinks. See, I'm... Yeah, but he's got a kind of walk by the side. So how is he saying no food? Maybe it closes. It, maybe it's closing now. Bar. That made no sense. All right, so we're gonna go to our room. And we're not going to the pool, because it's cold. Every time I hit this button, I don't know how many times you actually work, because I was just talking my elevator song, and, and you missed it, and I'm really sad now. Where's, why am I not seeing the really, oh, there they are. Really sad. Residential suite are those really big ones. I like those lanterns, the beautiful. But we're not a presidential suite type of house. Ooh, but they are. Something that choked. Uh oh. Not very presidential. Was that there earlier? I don't remember seeing it. That would have stuck out in my brain. What happened? And here we go. So, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up, like it, share, subscribe, all the good stuff, and, and I don't have a tagline. Singing hey ho, a maiden's life, one, two, three. Hey ho, a maiden's life, won't you drink with me?